animals that live in the water can be here. I'm going to turn the camera around so you can see the penguins. They're right here with me. They're not afraid of me. Try and get the camera around there. So, so what you're seeing here is about a month old penguin ship. He probably has about two more weeks to go before he can get his adult feathers and get into the water and get his own food. See, in the meantime, his parents are going to be coming to feed him, and then after a while, his parents are going to stop, and he'll be on his own to figure out how to get to the ocean, to jump in and go find his own food. So he doesn't really have to be taught. He already knows how to do a lot of this stuff. Just like we know how to walk. Nobody has... as the day goes on. Okay, we'll make the most of it. That's okay. Okay, teachers, I'm going to trust okay. your um, hands to call me, to call them on up. Okay, if she says to come on up, come on up quickly because we don't know how long we're going to have. Okay, here we go. First question coming up. Goldie? Okay, have a seat right here. Goldie, go ahead. Do you have, do you have enough food there? Jean, do you have enough food there? We do. Thank you for asking no. that you care about me. Thank you. Yeah, we do. Um, I pack, pack two and a half months worth of food before we come out here. So think about that. Think about how. Two and a half months of food? Is that what she said? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I have a hard time buying enough for a week. Can you imagine? <laughs> That's a lot of food to pack mm -hmm. and clothes. And oh. 
Like when we go camping, my family, that's a lot to plan for. Yeah. Okay. Why don't maybe just you talk with us and share what you can. Um, can you hear us? Talk about. Can you? Yes, I can. Okay, maybe talk. So, about, maybe you um, just lead the conversation. How long it took you to get there? How cold it is? All that stuff. Okay. All right. So I live in California on the off season, and I come down here for about three months, a little bit more sometimes out of the year. And I fly from Los Angeles, California, to Australia, then to New Zealand, and then we get on a military transport cargo plane, and I'm just cargo, like everything else, strapped up against the wall, and five more hours. Same as flying Los Angeles to New York. It takes almost three days, and that's if everything goes well to get here, and it takes three days to get home. <laughs> Same thing. So once we're here, we stay here for a long time. These birds, although they're, they're not afraid of me or not tame, they're not pets, we don't feed them, we don't hold them, we don't pet them, we don't name them. And unfortunately, if something happens to them, we can't help them. So she's saying they're wild. But... So this is a very harsh place, and nature takes its course. They eat krill and fish, which are two very small things out in the ocean. They have to eat the small stuff because they don't have any teeth. And they have to, they're swimming around, they grab it in their beak, and they just swallow it whole. Then they bring it here, and they feed their chicks. And this chick right there is a big, fat, oh, she went away. Turned his back on us. So I had some chicks right here, but they have wandered off. Um, so there's some chicks in front of me. They're not quite as big, but they're still very healthy. Part of our job is to see what the chicks are eating and what the parents are bringing ashore. We can't go out in the ocean and see what they're eating. We also don't can't hurt birds to get the food out of their bellies, so we wait until they regurgitate or throw up the food into the chick's mouth. And I sit here with my notebook and I mark it fish, if it's silver, krill, if it's pink, or a mixture. And that's how we know what's going on out in the ocean. These birds are safe on land. There's no, nobody who will bother them here. But in the water, they have a, a predator called a leopard seal. It's a big, big seal, and it, it eats penguins. And it's hard for us to see that. But the leopard seals are animals, and they need to eat, and this is what they eat. So the penguins are okay here, but in the water, they got to swim fast. The way they protect themselves from the leopard seals is get out of the water. So they jump onto the ice and get out of the way with those leopard seals. It takes about a month for the eggs to hatch, and somebody has to sit on that egg the whole time, either the male or the female. They cannot leave that egg unattended. It is too cold here, and the egg will freeze immediately. After that egg hatches and the chick is, is um, out, it takes about almost two months before that chick is really on his own. Six weeks to two months. And that most of that time we're here. When the chicks get big enough, we put bands on them. And a band is like a bracelet. It's around their wing or like around their wrist. And it has a number on it. And that way we know where the chick was born and what year the chick was born in. And we follow their lives. So we come down every year and we look for those birds with the band and we see what they're doing. Did they come back to breed? Did they come back to the same place to breed? Do they have the same partner? Did they do a good job breeding? <laughs> Did they breed every year? So we watch these birds on a yearly basis, and that's why we're here every single year. Okay, is there any other questions you have for me? Can you talk about the sunset again? Because I just find that fascinating. Oh, so I, I'm so far south that the sun came up in August, and it's not going to go back down until February. So I, I got here early part of November, and I have not seen a sunset. Right now, it's 10 o'clock in the morning on Saturday morning here, and it will look like this at 10 o'clock in the morning, at 10 o'clock at night, at 3 o'clock in the morning, or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It always looks exactly like this. It's kind of funny. And, 
you, it's weird to have the sun out all the time for three months. <laughs> but, but, but what's more weird is when I go dark and it's dark and I go, oh, look, stars. Oh, look, the moon. So it's it's a different. It's different. It's just different. You get used to it. People ask me, how do I possibly sleep with the sun up all the time? And I, I just tell you, I, I'm pretty tired. So I usually just put my head down and I'm asleep. There's a lot of work and it's very cold here. And we're outside most of the time. So I'm pretty tired at the end of my day. So sleeping is not a problem. Uh, but it is beautiful and it does mean that we can be working anytime we want. You can get on any schedule you want to get on. Uh, and people do. It doesn't matter when you work or when you sleep. It's all the same. It's funny. Here. How many people are with you? And in the this is the summertime here and in the wintertime the sun doesn't come up. So that's why the birds can't be here. They can't see in the dark and for three months out of the year the sun is is, is completely dark here, so they have to go way north to get to a place where the sun still comes up. So they travel about 500, 600, sometimes more miles north of here to get to a place where they can see in the winter. And, and how, what, where exactly do they usually go? And, and how many people are with you doing research? Um, on our team, we have eight people on our team. There's only two of us here. Uh, Dr. David Ailey is our senior scientist. He's the world's foremost authority on penguins, and he's here with me, so it's just two of us here because this is a small colony. The other colony has 500,000 of these birds, and the rest of our team is here because it just is more work, more birds, etc. Um, so we, we split our team between the two groups. The, uh, let's see, what was I... Uh, the other, the other uh, colony also is a little harder. It's more hilly there, so we send the young ones. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to try for a couple of questions. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. We're going to try for a couple of questions just in case it works. Let's see. Go ahead. Where we have a good connection. What's your question? Um, can you sleep at night while the penguins are making noise? Oh, yeah. Do the penguins make so much noise that you can't sleep? Oh, we lost her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, keep What's your question going to do? Oh, uh, how do you work? <laughs> well, I don't know. We might only have time for a couple questions, and I might let her just finish it up for us, okay? Um, my question is that why do penguins eat Penguins feed her pink? Yeah. Penguins feed her pink? I have a and there's a leopard seal in one of the newer movies that goes after penguins. What movie is that? Um, is it Happy Feet? Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, that one's scary. Huh? Oh, that one's scary. Oh, she's trying to call me. That's my computer. She's trying to call me, but on my computer, how do I? Well, that's weird. If I answer it over there, then we're going to Skype from my computer, and I don't have that. We don't want to do that. Okay, I'm going to wait for that to stop. Cause she's... Isn't that funny? She's calling me over there, but I don't have a camera over there. We don't want to Skype from my desk. How can we all sit behind there? She's probably wondering why I'm not answering. Well, let me, you know what, let me Skype now, hold on. Well, here, she just stopped. You missed one call from her. I sure did. I forgot, I could have, can you move, please? Thank you. Well, there's this, I could talk to her here. Okay, okay, I will tell her. I will call you. I don't know why it's connecting over there when we're... Sorry, guys. There's still some things that I'm learning. Why? Everybody's always learning, right? But if you're... Last time you the 
Yeah, but there's weird stuff. Why don't you just call her? Like, with the phone. Why don't you just answer over there? Guys, stay quiet. She knows what she's doing. Use your mouth to figure it out. Okay, she said okay, so she understands that I'm trying to call her. She's so sweet. She said since she lives nearby, maybe, we asked her if maybe she would someday come here. Wouldn't that be so cool? Yeah. I don't know. But if maybe. she bring the penguin with her. That That's what cool. someone else asked. If you come, can you bring a penguin? Isn't that funny? Yeah. Do you guys remember that book I read to you about the boy who's at the zoo and asks his dad if he can have a penguin? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I did I didn't. I did I did I did Did I tell you that there was a really bad storm a few days ago for her? Did I tell you that? No. And she had to cancel so many... The person many whom you're trying to reach is... She had to cancel so many Skypes with so many schools she felt so bad. So we're so lucky that we even get this little bit. Oh. Uh-oh. What do you do? So she had to cancel so many, oh, she's going to tell us something. She had to cancel so many Skypes, the storm was so bad that it destroyed their tent beyond repair. Okay, so it says she's typing. Jenny, Jean. Jean Pennycook is her name, Jean Pennycook, and she used to be a science teacher. Try one more time. Okay, everyone go like this. Cross our fingers. Okay. Everybody do this. Yeah, I believe it. Okay, that's a good sound. Okay. Okay. okay, we'll try this. Okay, sounds good. You go ahead and take this. Take it away. We'll let you talk. The um. The issue here is later in the day, more people are using the internet, and we have such a very small bandwidth that the more people who start to use it, then it gets a more uh, rental. Okay. And this is very popular to on the internet. So uh, that's how that works. Okay. So well, the early morning calls are much. Anyway, okay, so here, I'm going to try. Here we go. So these birds are, uh, the fun thing about them is that they're so animated. I love how much personality they have and how curious they are. And there are lots and lots of noises. You can hear their noises in the background. There's a lot of coming in and going right now because of the, the chicks. And But in a month, this place will be absolutely empty. All the birds will be gone. So it's kind of fun. And then I'll, we'll come back next year, and we'll watch them build their nests. And build their nests. Uh, let's see. Okay. Yeah. That's right. So you see, one of the adaptations that's for these birds is their feathers, and that they. It looks like these birds are really big, but the thing is, it. Take, look at your finger, and go from the tip of your finger down to the. They have on them. So they're actually, well, he wants to play with my shoes. Look at that guy. He's so curious. Uh, the layer of feathers is huge. It has to keep them warm and it has to keep them dry. They also have a layer of fat on them on the inside of their uh, skin, which helps keep them warm in the water. This is an extremely harsh continent. It's very cold here. And the temperature of the water is below freezing. It doesn't freeze because it has a lot of salt in it, but it is below freezing. So what do you think would happen to, the, to me if I fell in that water? Well, do you guys think what happened if she fell into the water? What do you she'll think would happen? Oh, she'd, she'd freeze. She'd freeze. And she'll get stuck. I would freeze. I, I would. It would be very dangerous for me to get wet here, and so I have to stay well away from the water. If I fall in, 
I have about five minutes to get out, or I'm in very, very deep trouble. So we're just very careful. But these birds live in it. So they can go in the water, and that's where they like to be. So just a big difference. They also, their coloration, people ask me about that. The black is so that when they're in the water, and a predator is on top of them, and looking down, all they see is dark. So they can't see them. And if the predator is below them, looking up, it looks like the sky. So it also can't see them. So that's why they're black on the back and white on the on their bill. The other adaptation they have that's interesting is not like ducks. They do not paddle like ducks. They swim in the water the same motion that, that other birds swim or fly in the air. It's exactly the same motion, and that's why they're good swimmers. They do not use their feet like ducks. So in the water, if you see movies of them swimming, it's the same as birds flying in the air. Very, very powerful wings, very, very strong. One thing that most people don't know is that uh, birds that fly have bones that are hollow on the inside. Now your bones are soft because you're a walker. Hollow. Oh, someone raise your hand. Tell me why birds that fly, how why are their bones hollow? Why is a bird's bone why are they hollow? How does that why is that? Yes. Someone said they're cold blooded. Why do you think a bird's bones would need to be hollow? How does that help them? It helps them when they need to it helps them when they need to fly, he said? Exactly. They're not so heavy. They're much lighter. But these birds don't fly in the air, so their wings are so their bones are solid like yours and mine. They're also, in their wings, their bones are flat. You can see the flippers in front of their wings. You can see how flat they are, not like other birds that are more rounded. So their bones are flat and their bones are solid. So very, very different than most other birds. But like other birds, they lay eggs, they have feathers, and they're beautiful. Anybody else with a question I can get real quick? Okay. Um, what was your question? Oh, uh, how do you get food? How do you get food? I don't know if we were able to hear the answer. How do you get food? How do you bring all that food there? So it comes out in a helicopter. So the way we move around here is with helicopters. So this is a really great job. Raise your hand if you think it'd be fun to have a job that you fly around in helicopters all the time. That's cool. Yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> so um, the helicopters bring it out, but but there's a downside. I better not forget anything because they will they will send a helicopter out if I absolutely have to get half something or it's an emergency. But I would not call to have a helicopter come out if I've forgotten um, the extra milk or I need a loaf of bread. This would not be good. <laughs> so very, very expensive to bring stuff out, uh, so I'm very careful in my ordering. And it would be a good exercise sometime to see what you could put together. How many, how much food do you need? How many years have you been doing this? Because I'm sure you have quite the list already figured out, right? Yeah, pretty much. Um, this is my 14th year coming to Antarctica. It's my 10th year with the Penguin team, and I'll probably stay with the Penguin team the rest of my Antarctic career. So let me turn the camera just slowly. I hope I won't drop you. I hope I won't drop you. There's the ocean, and there's our active volcano there. That's Mount Erebus, the southernmost active volcano in Antarctica, and it's covered with glaciers. Go figure. Who knew? At my very first year here, I worked on the volcano. So that, that's, that was my first time. I lived in a hut up by, on the top of the volcano right at the crater. Uh, that was very exciting. And um, I've been coming to Antarctica ever since. Wow, that's so cool. I feel like the colony is nearby. Is the other colony that was so huge, are they nearby? 
I'm sorry, say that again. The other colony that you were talking about, are they nearby? Uh, they're about 40 miles, 40 miles away. Do you guys all fly together and then you just separate? No, it's a total different direction. So they, it's on the other total other side of the island and it's a separate flight. Um, and, you know, it's not where we are. We can't walk there. It's not possible. Well, it's a long way anyway. <laughs> but we can't walk there. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Teachers, any other questions? That was a good one. No? Okay. Yeah. Yes, what's your question? Why, oh, why are the penguins' feet pink? They're, they're curious about the color of the penguins' feet. They're curious about the color of the penguins' feet. Oh, so when they're on the you can look at this guy's feet right here. There's some in the whitish category. So when they're in the water or when they come fresh out of the water, I think there's some pictures on our website of that. They're pink. So somebody tell me, why would they be pink? What is making the birds feet pink? And remember that they're just out of the very, very, very cool water. So what's making them pink? Someone raise your hand and give me an idea. Go ahead, nice and love. Because the water, the water dries them up. Yes, it's their blood. When they're in the water and they're looking, and the blood goes to their feet to keep or to work. When they come out here to the land, they do too much work and they want to save that heat. Otherwise, if the blood was always going to their feet, they would lose that heat to the environment. So their body is able to restrict that blood flow and keep the heat in their body. Let's do one more question, teachers. Do you know someone for one last question? You already asked a question, honey. If you already asked a question, put your hand down. And you, you said you, you come home tomorrow, is that what you were saying? Who? Teachers, who should you? Can you help me? Okay, Damien, okay, one, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, why do the penguins need help raising their babies, like their chicks? Well, they don't need any help. They can do this all by themselves. We're here, we, in fact, we're not allowed to help. If we see something going wrong, we cannot help. It's very sad for us because sometimes the chicks die and we can't do anything about it. So no, they don't need any help, certainly not from us. Any two month old penguin chick is better able to survive through the camps. Okay, you were saying earlier, what to, when do you come back home to California? Uh, well, this year, um, I would normally be home by February 1st. Usually I'm home by Super Bowl. <laughs> but um, this year I won't be home to the middle of March because I'm taking a trip. Oh, okay, good for you. Well, we want to say thank you so much. That was incredibly awesome. The Internet held true for us, so that's great. We're very appreciative. Can you guys say thank you to Ms. Pinnacle? Thank you, Ms. We, we welcome you here anytime. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Say bye. Bye. Bye, Jean. Thank you so much. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. All -bye. the penguins said bye. Did you hear that?